Welcome to the Muddy Waters of Freedom with your hosts, Matt Wright and Mohammed Shaker. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to the Vanguard. For Muhammad, I am Matt, and together we are traversing the muddied waters. Where's my where's my nick where's my nickname? Uh well actually I realized that we forgot to test our mics beforehand, so I was more looking at that than thinking about idiotic nicknames for you. Oh, okay. Sorry. For Muhammad, I still wet the bed shaker. I am Matt Wright, and together we are traversing the muddied waters of Freedom. Funny enough, I did that a few nights ago. That's oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the muddy bottom of freedom. You just admitted that. <laughs> Nobody's surprised. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my god. I'll leave that up to everybody to decide if uh, that actually happened or not. I 100% believe that actually happened. It may have. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, that threw me off completely. Yeah, you, uh, you're you a mind reader. <laughs> it's it's awesome. not the first time I've called you that. I don't remember hearing that before. Yeah, I called you it like... Also, I haven't wet my bed in a long time. <laughs> 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 wow. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> Ask me about it offline if you'd like. So, bes- besides you peeing the bed. <laughs> Wait, okay, I just want to stay. I drank a lot of water that uh, night. Yeah, I'm certain. And um, <laughs> I had a dream. Oh, uh, was there a toilet? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and thankfully, I realized right away what was going on. <laughs> so, I got up. I was like, whoa! <laughs> And, uh, yeah, took care of it. Excellent. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, first and foremost, let's thank Low Tide Kava Bar <laughs> for the Kava and Crab that we drink on our show. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> thank you to Jay and everybody at Low Tide for... I can't believe I just thanked Jay for something. Thank you to Jay and everybody else at Low Tide for the Kava. Uh, Bula. Bula. It's a new philosophy I'm following called Stoicism. It's a Roman philosophy and uh, ancient Roman philosophy. And it's all about to help me with my fucking depression and shit. And uh, it's probably the antidepressants that help me be more open about stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Like one of the first things you do is you, you know, it's all about um, ignoring problems that are like just not in your control. And like not not dealing with it, but not putting so much emphasis on it that it ruins the rest of your day, week or whatever. You know, it's like you start off by envisioning yourself outside your body and, you know, you you, you go out to see your your house and then your cities, the planet, whatever. And then you realize how fucking small you are. Mm. And I was like, so wait a minute. I like that. I like that. If I can't ha- if, are, it, if it's out of my control, then why the fuck am I worried? Are you finally admitting that you used to make big deals out of things that don't matter? Yeah, I always have. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure that we were <laughs> all... for peeing the bed. Right. <laughs> yeah. Shit happens. Well, pee happens. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but um, Apple has this great feature on their phones that if you hold down these two buttons simultaneously for a long enough period of time, it calls 911. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, right? So you don't have to go when you're hiding in the closet and you're like, boop, boop, and right. then the fucking people inside your house come and drag you from, out, uh, from, from the closet and hold you for ransom. Yeah, so yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, what, what, another really cool feature about it is when you set it up, uh, it will text people in your phone that you have set in there to let them know that you just made an emergency 911 call from your phone. Now, I'm going to be really sad if this story goes to you accidentally doing this and I never got a text. Let's just change the story. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, but tell me, though. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, yeah, so I... TJ, our, our buddy TJ and I, we went out, we did a, a celebration day 
because we were supposed to go to the Grand Prix, and then I realized that the tickets were on the wrong day. <laughs> so we like just went all around, and uh, we went up to Celebration Station because we figured we'd go race, race go-karts. And so we're in there, a bunch of kids, and like we're by far the oldest people there without children, mm -hmm. easily. And so we're racing the go-karts, and we're going around, and you know, TJ apparently didn't do anything else in Texas growing up besides race go-karts because mm -hmm. he's really good at it. <laughs> and so like we're going around and like I'm in front of him on the last lap and I'm like staying in front of him and we start going around a turn and he hits me and I spin out and I go slamming straight into a wall in which this little rugrat child slams directly into the side of me and pinned my leg up against like what it, the seat siding thing. Which then made my phone call 911 oh, shit. twice. And I can't feel my phone going off because I got so much stuff in is my Is the case what saved your phone from breaking? No, or it's, is the that's phone, just Apple. The phone but, is like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a case on there, though, right? Oh, wow. Good that's job, the, Apple. That's the phone. Yeah. So, I give them that. Yeah. So, like, I, did, it, I didn't feel it. And, like, 911 called me back, but they called from, like, a 727 number. And I was just like, I'm not answering that. They probably, they probably routed you to, like, local PD. Yeah, probably. So, like, I was just like, I don't know who that is. So I stopped. So I didn't answer it. And then, like, we get out, and I pull my phone out. And it said, oh, you have to put in your password instead of using face recognition, which that's an also an automatic yeah. thing whenever you dial 911 on the phone. And um, So the bad guys don't hold the camera to your face when you're right. tied up. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, that's what it is. Or for the police not to do that. So The bad guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Depends on which bad guys we're talking about. But... <laughs> So I was like, oh, that's weird. So I did that. And my phone had blown up with text messages. And my dad. People had, like responding to you. My dad was like, what? What is going on? Are you okay? Because he got two text messages. And, <laughs> help, help. <laughs> and the text message says, hang on a second. Let me pull it up. Um, emergency SOS. Matt Ray has made an emergency call. You oh are my receiving God. this message because Matt has listed you as an emergency contact. Holy shit. Right. The people who are, were on that list were my dad. I'm going to say my mom, but she's not on it. <laughs> my dad. My I don't mom, feel bad anymore. Yeah. My dad, my mom. That's really bad. Your mom. Adam. She should be like the first person on the list. Sean. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I don't want to make her worry. I don't know. <laughs> my mom would kill me again. <laughs> yep. But the last person on the list was my ex. Oh. <laughs> so I'm getting text messages from her. Are you okay? And I'm like, what is... Oh, crap. <laughs> and then, like... I, so I was just like, okay, I'm just not going to respond. And then she called. And since I don't have her number saved anymore, I was like... I would just answered it, assuming it was the police calling to be like, are you actually hurt? And I was going to say, no, I'm at Celebration Station. I was in a go-kart accident. <laughs> a go-kart accident. <laughs> I was in a go-kart accident. Uh, I'm getting ready to go to the batting cages. Like, you know, and I answered, I was like, hello. And she's like, hey, are you okay? And I, oh, yeah. And then I wanted to explain what happened. And then I was like, no, because that makes me sound really like an idiot in this situation <laughs> why it's not in your control i i understand that it's not in my control but it's like yeah mm -hmm. you, you got to worry about me because tj spun me out on a go-kart <laughs> a five-year-old ran into me <laughs> that's funny <laughs> but then we watched blood and bone and if you guys haven't well, seen well let's let's movie, introduce him and then continue oh, yeah, with these stories people don't know him that's right nope uh so for anybody who does not know the person sitting to my right, Muhammad's left. To your center. To your center. To the Amish gentleman who is braving the electricity for this. Um, <laughs> this is John Sterner. He is a uh, friend. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Best friend. Yeah. Okay. He always gives me a pinch when I need it. Yeah. He's like one of my favorite people for that. That's on the butt. <laughs> <laughs> I had to be here for you. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, this is, this is John. He's a Kava community regular. He is the reason I actually have this, uh, man, the Eagle has landed. Yeah. Thing. We, we talked about it before on the show. I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. John actually found this and sold it to me 
for a discounted rate so he could come on the show. <laughs> found it in the garbage? He did. He found it yeah. in the trash. Yeah, well, a bunch of them you did. A lot of stuff, right? There it was, was like everything from the Eagles landed to right before Nixon's resignation, right? Yes, now. yeah. Yeah, that, that's crazy. Yeah. If you had Nixon's re- resignation, I would have taken that so quick. That would be on eBay. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Funny, dude, I was... I always talk about how much I watch YouTube, and I was watching a YouTube video today about all the crazy shit you could find at fucking Goodwill. Oh, like, yeah. You can find, like, really expensive shit for, like, $2. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jay goes there all the time and buys shit. Yeah. Holy shit. I didn't know that. I mean, you know, like, you finding that just for fucking free. You'd think somebody would know the value of those, you know? That's the Washington Post right there from right. 60. They had two of those seven. exact ones in it. Yeah. Yeah. I sold the other one to Sean. Yeah. I mean, it's great. I spent more on the framing than I did on the actual paper. But, well, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. But you're here. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, John John has wanted to be on the show for, well, basically since the beginning. Yeah. And uh, there have been multiple times where he's like, just fire the co-host. <laughs> he's never there anyway. <laughs> and I'll come in. And I'm like, no, I'm not firing Muhammad. <laughs> you thought about it. I did. And you beat out the commies that... Or a commie that we were going to bring on. Antifa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's actually Antifa. Uh, no, I think he's... I'm going to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah. So we watched this movie, Blood and Bone. And if you have not seen... If anybody out there has not seen this movie, I'm going to tell you, it's awful. But it's amazing at the same time. It stars Michael Jai White, who is Spawn. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's a martial arts movie. It's about this guy that gets out of jail and he gets in an underground boxing thing, like tournament. And it's just about him beating the ever living crap out of people. <laughs> there are so many holes in the movie. And you're like, wait, why did that happen? And like I was talking with TJ and TJ was like, yeah, a lot of it you just kind of have to fill in on your own. You're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just talked about it for like 30 minutes afterwards. And it was just like, I was like just staring at the TV and he was but why did they? And he's like, I don't know. So is that like the room sort of movie, with type of experience, uh, with really great fighting scenes? Okay. <laughs> essentially, I mean, it, it was insane. But yes, you need to watch this movie, and it's streaming. The entire thing streams on YouTube, so you don't even have to admit you rented it. <laughs> <laughs> it just shows up in your history. Um. So, John. Yep. I know how excited you are to be here. Tell us about yourself, John. Yes. Well, what do you want to know? I don't know. Tell us where you're from, man. I was born in Missouri. Moved to this god-awful state. And it's not awful. You're still here. It's so hot. It is. It is so hot. It's so hot, yeah. But <laughs> it, could, it could be snowing. Boston got like 48 inches of snow last week. What else? I voted Trump. And I'm like, that was going to be one. Yeah, yeah. People. Yeah, you, I know you did. Um, yeah. Did you? Were you going to vote for anybody else, or were you Trump from the get-go? I was Trump from the get-go. Okay, okay. Yeah, because I knew it was going to be him or Hillary. So I went with Trump. I know a lot of people probably saw it like that, too. Yeah. Actually, a lot of people saw it that way. That's why he was pretty much number one, except for the one time Ben Carson took him over for a few weeks. Yeah, for, for a few days. Yeah. Wasn't Jeb Bush winning until he hacked his account, his uh, web page? No, 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 no. Jeb, Jeb was. Jeb never did good. Jeb was the per- he was he was the perceived nominee early on. Yeah, but yeah. He, but at no point was he up in the polls. I don't think. Maybe when he first announced, but yeah. Once it filled out to the twenty-seven people running or whatever it was. Yeah, Trump. which which is crazy, man. Because um, like when I get those past posts in my previous years, uh, from like oh eight and twelve, uh. Well, 11 and 12, when Trump had ran, like, nobody took the guy seriously at all. Not even me. No. And, uh, I, even all those posts still show up. Oh, I see posts like that all the time. I'm like, where it's like, I understand that Trump's not going to get the Republican nomination, but him giving out Lindsey Graham's phone number is the most gangster thing I've ever oh, seen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do. No, no. I, I, yeah, that's not exactly. I'm, t- I'm talking like back, I see posts from like 2011 and. No, not 2008, but 2011, when, like nobody took the guy seriously. So to me, it's surprising that he came back in 20, 
16 and got the nomination. Oh, yeah. Because he, nobody took him seriously in 2011 and 2012. Um, but good for him. Like, I'm not, that's actually a good thing. Good for him. He went from being the laughing stock to being the president, proving a lot of people wrong. In, yeah, in, back in 2012, he was more like a Democrat. Yeah. Republican. A lot more, probably. Right. Yeah. More independent. Yeah. So once he finally went full Republican, that. Well, yeah. Help. Well, no. yeah. He went from being more liberal. Wait, yeah, to I was going to say w- w- when he joined the Republican Party, as opposed to when he was trying to start his own. Hmm. Hmm. But, but yeah, you uh, you have been a staunch trumpeter from the beginning. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Um, get the flack on Facebook. You do. You're going to have to hold that. Like, I right, got it. Yeah. Like, right, yeah. 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 Like penis. And, yeah, yeah. and the first question from one of our friends came in, and Macy Fulmer is asking you to talk about the wall. What about it? <laughs> Tell us why you like the wall. Or not like the wall. No, he likes it. I know he likes the wall. <laughs> but all you said was, Tell us about the wall. I got mixed feelings on it. Oh, he's been listening. Wow. I have not been listening, uh, but you're our number one listener. I can <laughs> see those stats. <laughs> yeah, I just keep it on just to give you ratings. You're welcome, by the way. <laughs> okay. If we can get money for it and make Mexico pay for it. Okay. Which there's ways, taxes, no. and trade. <laughs> there is. No. no. <laughs> Every way that there is to have... Every way that there is for to have uh, Mexico pay for it, Americans pay for it. I, I will say, <laughs> I will say this, man. It's okay to like the wall, even if we're gonna pay for it. It, it is okay. if that's what you want. But no matter what, I'm not gonna judge you on it. I'll tell you why I think you're wrong. But it's okay to believe that if you want. I'm just throwing it out there. Okay. Um, but no, no. There is actually there. Are, there's no way to make Mexico pay for it. There is no way. No. I mean, there there are things you can do to entice some. I don't know. I can't conceive of any way that we can make them pay for the whole wall. There's no way. No. Because yeah. it's going to be expensive. And I mean, if you if you add tariffs to anything that they come over, that's just Americans paying higher money for those products, much like, you know, steel. But <laughs> what, what – tell me why uh, – you like what do you, what do you want the wall to do whether there is a wall or not what what's the con why is the wall important what why is the idea of it important to you just to stop people that we don't know coming in okay before we so we know who's in our country and who's not so it's not as much about you're not one of those detector jobs people no okay <laughs> they do it cheaper i understand that <laughs> Uh, we got a if smart trumper here. If I need a cheap, here, yeah. I need a cheap <laughs> belt, I know where to go. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right. And actually, um, I'm not going to go through my phone right now, but I, I, may, I think I opened it up on my in my Chrome in my phone. There's a, an article in the New York Times, and farming wages have been going up since de- since the de- deportations and immigration deportations well they haven't really went up but since immigration itself went down there's like less people coming in uh wages are going up and americans are still not taking the job yep. so you're you are right on that yes 100 percent. americans are uh, something else one of my buddies told me uh timmy who who was um timmy rodecker uh he was in the republican liberty caucus with me but he's in california now um uh, he used to work for Jabel here. It's a company. It's a big industry uh, engineering company, I guess. And um, like right now, they're working on the world's largest batteries. They're b- pretty much the size of um, we call them connexes. You know those shipping containers. Yeah. Their batteries that big for like, I guess solar farms and small towns and stuff. Big big batteries. And uh, every time when they hire people, a bunch will come in and then. The attrition is really high when it comes to like American born people, white, black, anything. They they don't tend to stick around to do these repetitive, low and paying jobs. Um so yeah, you are right about that and I, I agree. I agree with you about it. Um 
that's one of the things I actually said on one of the shows is I I don't like the wall, but I I, I like the concept of border control. Right. I'm a fan of border control. I'm not a fan of the wall. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think if we privatize everything, the people controlling whatever the hell could be the border are going to control their own property. It's going to be the same thing. Um, Somebody like John could buy a large swath of land in yeah. Texas and just line it with landmines. Assault yeah. rifles. That too. Yeah, that too. Yeah. yeah. A uh, fully automatic, F- fully, uh, fully, fully semi-automatic, fully semi-automatic. Fully semi-automatics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, just put a bunch of landmines on it, and nobody's going to run across your property. Mm-hmm. Well, and you know, it's going to. I mean, neither will you. But <laughs> this is not towards any specific liberal, obviously, but like <laughs> all over California, um, and even in New York, I don't know the exact word I'm looking. Segregation. Um, a lot of neighborhoods and cities are highly segregated in a lot of these liberal areas. Uh, where to like a few years ago, the South, the the deep South became the most segregated area of the whole country, uh, desegregated. I'm sorry. The South is the most desegregated area in the whole country, like really? Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, all of that. It's very desegregated compared to states like New York, California, so on and so forth. And there's been times where um, in a lot of these very deep blue areas in like California, they would do their best to keep immigrants and people of low income out of their vicinity through like different laws and stuff like that. So even with private laws, like if you like fully privatize everything, I don't think the most liberal people would let a lot of immigrants through their own private borders if they wanted to, because that's what's been shown in California anyways. Right. So, right. I mean, I think that you'll get people like Cards Against Humanity who would open it up and just be like, no, I'm not going to do anything with this land or, you know, just to be Cards Against Humanity, which I don't have a problem with them doing that. It's their land. They can actually do it. Don't care. But, you know, like I think for the most part, the people across the border states are will try to make it so nobody comes on their property. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But, uh, yeah, you know terrorists could come across could no i don't know not if, saying that, not saying i don't they, know if they are or not but they could like that, that is i mean not, that's that that's the big fact that's the big argument that i always get from people and it's not that you know they're worried about like you know the the hispanics or you know whatever coming up through there they're worried about terrorists sneaking in through the southern border um and that's why they want the wall with them like they could just come in through the north. Like they could just say A after everything and pretend they're Canadian. Like it. No, they can't. <laughs> and I'm taking your side, especially you on this. But um, and this is a thing that liberals get wrong. Is they assume it's as easy here as it is everywhere else, which is absolutely false. What do you mean? Going into another country. No, no. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is the easiest country to get into. Yes. Um, That's what I'm... Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Right. They could just come in through the north as opposed... Oh, what I'm saying is because of Canada, Canada will stop people from coming in, something we don't do. Right, right, right. right. That's what I meant to say. Like, you're right, but it still would be... It would be harder. It's actually still easier to fucking come in here. Right. Some And easier through Mexico for some reason. Um, well, easier through Mexico because they probably have less strict immigration laws compared to Canada. But you look at Canada and Europe, especially Scandinavia and all that strictest, strictest, except for That's like because they want the a lot refugee of that thing. Look like me. Yeah. <laughs> well, except for the refugee thing, which is different because that's not immigration. But it is not easy to move to another country because me, one of my best friends in the army. Andrew and I, um, he got his degree in accounting or finance or something. And him and I wanted to, like, move to New Zealand. Um, and and uh, what, we found out it was really hard. Oh, yeah. It's, and, it's really yeah, difficult. And it's really hard to do that anywhere, because especially in, in the developed Western world, because you have to prove that you're going to be contributing to that society mm-hmm. and not just there to use their – very very large welfare states which they do have yes so they're not a stupid they're uh, not that stupid either with their big welfare states they know they're they're going to control it somehow right and like my my friends moved to england 
and he, one of them was an English. Was, he he was a citizen, but his girlfriend wasn't. Like she had to have a certain amount of money in the bank mm -hmm. to go there. Um, she had to have a job lined up. Like there was a bunch of stuff that she had to fulfill, and like it was great for me because we all worked together, and mm -hmm. they were trying to save up the amount of money that they needed. Mm -hmm. So if I ever wanted a day off work, I was just you guys. One of you guys want to take this shift? I'm out. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. If I wanted to get off early, but you guys just want to, you get, you got cut. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, it's um, and here's one of the things about the bo the border wall and like closing the border 100 percent, which I don't agree with. This is something I had brought up, I think, on the show. I, I think I said it on the show. It was about guns, uh, and I did say it on Facebook to one of our friends, Jeremy. Um, because he was talking about like a national database for guns. And I said, okay, sure, I'll meet you halfway on that. But if you're going to do that and you want everybody to be in that database, you're not. You're going to have to keep it open to let pe people buy the guns so they can get in your database. You don't just make a database and then make it harder to get guns because all that's going to do is going to make people still get, go around the system and not get in the database. Same thing. I I like strong borders, but I don't want to make it hard for people to get in because if you do, they will they will find a way to get in if they want to. But if you make it easy on them to get in, easy on them to get in this database so we know who's coming in, I think that's a good thing to do. Like make it easy, let 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 so we can, you know, if you people don't want to break the law, they don't. So if you make it easy, you know, you can be like, hey, you know, you're coming into this. Fine, tell us your name, where you're from. Take all their information. Make a database out of it if they're immigrants and whatever, you know. Um, I see no problem with that in my opinion. I mean, I, th I feel like that's going to be a necessary thing to give in to the very strong immigration control people is allowing some sort of database to track those people. Fine. I, that's, I'm fine with that. Nah. Um, whatever. Until they get their citizenships, which they could probably earn one day. So... We all know that on, well, out of the three of us, we all know, not everybody watching us knows because not everybody watching knows you. Um, you may get a friend request or two, um, <laughs> but uh, especially depending on how humorous you make these answers. But we know that uh, you have a lot of things that you like that Trump have said. So like, can, what are some of, what's your favorite thing he has done so far? Because um, I have my answer. There's quite a bit. All right. There's he's bringing jobs back to the U.S. Yeah. Okay. Which he is. For, they people like to argue that, but Ford and all the car manufacturing places are coming back. I mean, Apple's oh. Apple's saying that they're coming back. Oh, and they're bringing all their money in too. Yeah, yeah. And that's bringing, because of the corporate tax, tax rate going Right. Yeah. So yeah, I, I agree with you on that. That I also like. He drew a red line in Syria and stuck to it. Okay. Um. Now I'm kind of. <laughs> you're on the spot. Now. I know. Now you're. Yeah, on the I'm spot. on the spot. So I'm trying to think back. No one's going to judge you, man. Just talk. Yeah. I mean, they will judge you, but. Well, yeah. Obviously. I mean, because the best thing the he's done is beat Hillary. Okay. Yeah. I'll okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you a, that. That's a really good thing. I mean, personally, I think uh, adding Gorsuch to the Supreme Court. That, yeah, that's that was, my number that was, one. That was my number. That's one. my number one. The tax. The tax. Uh, law was my number two. Mm -hmm. I like the two for one system that actually came. As far as I know, Canada is the only other country I read that has done that. They've done that years ago. The uh, it's a deregulatory thing oh, where it's add like one new regulation, you get rid of two. Yeah, but I don't know how. I don't know exactly how they're they're going to implement that because I remember one thing somebody said about that is all you have to do then is just make those lines longer. You you make that one regulation a lot more comprehensive. So, and maybe they have some something, you know, in the system. Like, for example, if you're going to add, you have to be over 21 to buy a rifle. You have to remove two other regulations elsewhere, like on rifles somewhere. Um, what they were saying is to get around that, they just make it, that line on the bill to be, you have to be older than 21 and something, 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 something has nothing to do with it. 
which you can do because that happens a lot in bills, at least when it comes to all the different kinds of stuff that gets shoved into those bills. Um, but maybe there's a way around it. I don't know. Hopefully there's some way to get around that because that's a, one of my favorite things. And I think he's he's been actually reg- deregulating a lot is something I had read. Like there's a lot of stuff go- just being thrown out all the all the time. Yeah, he's he's deregulated a bunch of stuff and made a lot of industries yeah. be able to work more unimpeded. Yes. Which I think is a huge help and which helps with the job growth. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember everything else he has done. Um, to, I guess the Paris Agreement, because that had came up. Um, I'm, the only reason I'm, <laughs> I kind of like it is I'm not a fan of government approach to environmentalism, and it was a non-binding feel-good, uh, what do you call it, accord, that was like, hey, we're, we're, we believe in doing this, and nobody was held to anything. And we actually held held up what we could on yeah, our we, end. We held our promises, and then other people didn't, which we're still going to hold up even though we're not there. And that's the thing that some people get wrong is they think we're out of the Paris Agreement, then like we're just gonna fucking start, coal is being dumped. Oh yeah, we're, <laughs> we're dumping all the plastic everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're we're dropping plastic into Afghanistan now, just so that they have to deal with the issue. Yeah, but the way we got that down is federal law, not the Paris agreement. So even signing out of that, we're still maintaining our CO2 levels and all that. Coal, the coal thing though, like I think there's, cause it came up like, and I didn't see it back then, back in March, exactly like a year ago. Uh, I think Trump was signing an executive order, overturning something that has to do with dumping coal mine waste in rivers and I try. I re, I actually said they're researching this a lot, because um, a friend of mine. That, I, she's a good friend, and I wanted. I was like, she's kind of. I mean, I can see why that's a, that that's a bad thing, um, him allowing that. And I couldn't find much on it. And if anybody else has knows anything about what. The coal mines. If anybody doing, knows what Muhammad is talking about right now? It's it's it, it uh, like I said. It's an Obama era regulation that that was aimed at coal mines dumping wastes in rivers. Oh, and Trump overturned that a year ago. Right, and I, I can see about. why that's a bad thing. I didn't even know about this until I saw it a week ago, and I wanted to like set, tell her something about it, but I I honestly couldn't find anything, which is. Usually I'm able to find what I need to. <laughs> right. Um, but, yeah. So what would be your least favorite thing that Trump's done? Or said. Or said. Or said. <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> I know where your mind went initially. I was like, no, don't say that one out loud. Uh, Probably the thing you guys talked about last week. About guns. Okay. All and right. him taking them. The, yeah, the take guns first, due process second. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was definitely one of my least favorite things that he has done. And honestly, Syria. Yeah. Syria was one of my, I did not like how that was handled at all. Uh, like when we fired the missiles last mm-hmm. year. Yeah. And it looked like we were going to go to war with Syria. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't like that because... You know, they were just like, oh, yeah, uh, Assad used chemical weapons. When last week, I don't know if you guys saw this. No. Last week, uh, Mad Dog Mattis said there's no evidence that he used chemical weapons, but we're looking for it. Yeah. And well, it's good that we're looking for it, but that's after the fact. It's also like a year later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But was that on that issue or the recent chlorine attack? Uh, that he was referring to. Well, he was saying that they have not. It was found... on the thing that killed like sixty people, I think, or was it more than sixty? I wh- what one... he was talking about was that they hadn't found any use that any evidence that Assad had used yeah. chemical weapons, but they were looking for it. Yeah, they did. He did say that there was evidence that uh, the the rebels that we are backing um, have used chemical weapons. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, we just need to stay out of Syria. Yeah, and my thing about that, knowing Middle Eastern politics, is uh, Assad has no reason to put himself in the spotlight, the spotlight like that, um, when he has been uh, what you call it, um, 
He does. He, look, Syria and Assad have had their issues, and they still do because they're technically at war with Israel. I think they're the only country in the Middle East still at war with Israel. They just have a really long, drawn out kind of like North Korea, South Korea issue thing going on with the Golan Heights. Um, he wouldn't want to put himself in danger or his country by using chemical attacks on his own people years after the revolution started. What with what's been going on with Israel and the United States being pretty much right there, I don't see it happening. Um, but a lot of people ate it up and said that he did. I don't believe it though. Also, another thing I like Trump did was give the military their own options on how to defeat ISIS and let them go after them. And yeah, them. I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Even though I'm like super anti-war, but to me it makes sense. If you're going to go to war, you go to war. You don't let the politicians decide decide right. stuff. It makes no sense. Who never been to war. Right. Yeah, yeah. Especially and, on how to do it. It mm-hmm. doesn't make sense. Yeah, ever since, uh, I mean, Vietnam was a big case of that, and I think... Iraq and Afghanistan now are really big cases of that, especially Afghanistan more so than Iraq. Um, there's all these uh, uh, rules of engagements on what you can and can't do. You have to like, if you see, it's like stuff like if you see a gun, if you see somebody with an AK or something, and they look like they're going to shoot a bunch of people or you, you can't really shoot at them until they shoot at you which could be too late. It's stuff like that that makes its way all the way into the in, into the into the war zone from the politicians that ends up hurting a lot of the service members and makes it a lot harder to win when it comes to winning that war pretty much. Um but yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. what else? Um so what else you got? Well, I was going to say so- <laughs> So we, uh, it came out this week. I think it was this week. Yeah, it had to be this week because we would have talked about it last week. Mm-hmm. That uh, the Rocket Man has agreed to meet with the Supreme Leader. I love that nickname, Supreme Leader. No, Rocket. <laughs> 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 that the Rocket Man has agreed to meet with the Supreme Leader and possibly talk mm-hmm. peace talks. Yeah, and somebody even said um, there was an article written that these talks could actually bring. President Trump a Nobel Peace Prize and he would deserve it and I was kind of like you know what that I would agree with that considering <laughs> who got it last and what he ended up doing after he got it right um, I was I was gonna say if, if Obama got the Nobel Peace Prize for <laughs> what he did if Trump goes and meets with this guy I mean that's basically a slam dunk yeah honestly like I think that would be if Trump doesn't start any more wars, even if he doesn't finish these ones, because I don't see him doing that. I usually I expect usually a, even though a lot of times Republicans have ended the wars. Um, but today, the way things are, I expect the Democrat president to do it. That's why a lot of us were like, oh, Obama's going to finish the war. Yeah, but he didn't. Yeah, yeah. But if tr- President Trump doesn't start any wars and these peace talks lead to peace. In North and South Korea, he'll be the most peaceful president I would, in the last I twenty would, years. That's another thing on me voting for him this next time, like actually voting for somebody rather than not voting for anybody, like I did last time. Yeah, yeah. Um, not American. <laughs> Obviously, look at him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's Egyptian. Uh, uh, the one thing I like is uh, Trump got the uh, court order to uh, gag a porn star. <laughs> that was the greatest headline. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that's going so far. It was before he even was thinking about running. So why do people like care? It. There you go. Like, mm-hmm. You know how it's on is. the top. Yeah. Pre- pretend it's Mark. Yeah. yeah. Why do people care about it when it happened? What? 12 years ago? No, 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 no. I th- well, was it? Yeah, no, it was a while ago. It was back. Yeah. In, like, oh, okay. It was back in like 2000. I don't know why they care. I, I, well, they care because they're trying to show. And I can I can agree with them on this. They, they they're trying to show that the Republican base is hypocritical for voting for a guy that is not really as Christian as as he says, yeah, or Christian like Christian like as a lot of the other politicians when it comes to how much of a man whore he is, which he kind of is. Oh yeah, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. But that's Grab what him. that's that's what they're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, I, was, I knew he was going to say yeah. that at some point. 
Um, that's why. Um, I think it's silly and I don't care. It's not like I've never cared about that stuff. Yeah. I do think it's hypocritical, but I don't care. I mean, no matter what, politicians are always going to cheat. Yeah. Well, because they're people. People Cause, ch- right? Because pe- cheat. You people know? cheat. Yeah. Politicians are always going to philander. Uh, you know, businessmen are always going to philander. All of that's always going to happen. It's not really all that newsworthy. N- like, and nobody cares. It, that I, th- I honestly don't think yeah. anybody really cares. Nope. Yeah. Right. Like, I did not like Clinton as a president. Bill, obviously, because he was. <laughs> but uh, I didn't like Clinton as a president. Uh, but even I thought that, like, them trying to get him for, you know, hooking up with an intern was wrong. And, yeah, he did lie about it to the nation. But what is is? <laughs> that depends on what your definition of is is. <laughs> God, that was the greatest sentence ever said on live TV. Um, but he um, I didn't care. And I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, I was in high school and I was still very like I was very religious at the time. And I was like, you shouldn't cheat on your wife. But I was like, that shouldn't preclude somebody from being present. Otherwise, you know, JFK gone, LBJ gone, FDR gone, which that one would have been kind of cool. I'm certain Nixon gone. Like, I'm certain all of them have Mm -hmm. done it. Yeah, you can't. I'm not I'm not going out on a limb and saying, oh, I think Calvin Coolidge didn't cheat. I mean, maybe he did. I don't know. Maybe, he stayed yeah. out of everybody's life. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I'd give him the same respect. Depends on the, yeah, it depends on the person. Like, I don't think Obama or George or the Bushes would really fall into that. Just because Obama is a, Obama's a really good family guy. You can just tell with the interactions and all of it, the family. Uh, but the Bushes, you know, like, same thing with them. And they're, they're like, very Christian. Um, yeah, but that doesn't preclude them from making mistakes. That's true. That's true. So I speaking mean, of Jesse Waters, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, all politicians lie. And if you're going to get Clinton for lying to the American public for saying, no, I didn't cheat on my wife, mm-hmm. which is essentially what he said. Yeah. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> um, he's like, he basically just said, I didn't cheat on my wife. And they were like, oh, well, you just lied to the American people. Mm-hmm. Every president in history has done that. Yeah. Every one of them. Yeah. I do agree that the other. If not an office in their past. Is, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, they've all done it in the like, I'm certain all of them have done it in the office. Like, I don't know, man. That's that's reaching, though. Is it? Yeah. Everyone. Everyone. Yes. One hundred percent. Every oh. single one has lied. Oh, lied. Okay, yes. Yeah. I thought you meant like oh, no, no, engage no. in sexual no, no, relations. No, no, I mean, I'm certain they've all engaged in sexual relations. but With their wives? <laughs> or others. Yeah, but I don't think all of them with others. No. Right, not all okay. of them with others. No, I'm, but I'm saying if you're impeaching him for lying to the American public, you can impeach every president yeah, ever yeah. for doing that. Yeah. So, like, that's where my issue with that one was. Mm-hmm. Like, did he? he yeah. Okay. Well, and the other issue is, like, the de- the, the Democrats – have let Bill Clinton get away with with that kind of behavior, and other liberals in the media, actors, uh, right. so on and so forth, which is hypocritical. But that's and the pre- Republicans, that's the predatory behavior, as opposed yeah. to just having an affair. Behavior. Yes, yes, but but also, so the Democrats are hypocrites on that, and the Republicans are hypocrites for not making a big deal out of Trump's extramarital affairs. As much as they do with the with Bill and the other ones, right? So they're all everyone's a hypocrite. Like nobody when, com- when Newt Gingrich's the news about Newt Gingrich's open relationship came out. Open relationship? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Newt and his wife, they're they're, they're swingers, man. Oh wow! Uh, Good for them. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, but uh, news came out back in twelve, right before, right before the first Republican debate. Wasn't Gingrich the one that wanted to build a moon, a base moon? <laughs> moon base? Yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> but yeah, uh, right before the debate, that came out. And uh, the, uh, whoever the whoever was leading the debate, mm-hmm. uh, it was in South Carolina. She was like, Mr. Uh, Secretary Gingrich, this is a question for you. Um, do you want to address the allegations that have come out this week about you asking your wife for an open relationship? In the past. And he looked her dead in the eye and he goes, no, I do not. <laughs> and he goes, that's my private life and I'm keeping it that way. And I was like, 
That's how you answer that question. Yes. <laughs> That's a good job, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that is the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I don't really think that we, you know, like, I don't care that he had sex with a porn star. Mm-hmm. I don't. It doesn't matter. Oh, um, that's for you. What? Someone's on their way to work to your bathroom. On your bathroom. Yep, they are. That's going to be real interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> Second time the bathroom came up in this uh, yeah, podcast. No. My sh- my shower broke. No, oh. <laughs> so I'm waiting on them to fix it. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, what else? Yeah. So, uh, man, how did we get there? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens on the show, man. <laughs> I know I watch. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We just kind of went off on tangent after tangent on that one. Yeah. So the gun thing that you brought up, Trump gun. Oh, wait. Yeah. So let's talk about the gun thing since we have 10 minutes left, probably. No, we've got longer than that. We have 10 minutes left. No, 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 no. And uh, so let, well, let's go, go into guns and then. Talk about Tennessee, right? We oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's talk about Tennessee, too. That's a good call. Yeah, so after we do guns now. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm sure some of my friends saw the news. I saw the news and I just made a Facebook post out of it because I do what I want. <laughs> but, yeah, there's a, a woman named Karen Mallard, I think. Mallard or Millard. Mallard uh, running for Congress in uh, the state of Virginia. And... Um, she went on Facebook. I don't know if she did it live or not, but the video was on Facebook. And she kind of did the same thing that this other old white guy did um, where he sat with his AR and he was like, <laughs> "There, you know, I want there to be one less gun out there to kill people. I will not let this gun kill anybody. Which, good on him, because that gun was tweeting about shooting people, obviously. Um, that, and, that, and, that gun was really looking to get out there and yeah. just start blowing <laughs> people away. And, um, what's your call? So, uh, he saw, he, he, he did what's called an SBR, a short barrel rifle. It's like a sawed off shotgun. It's a short barrel rifle, exactly what it sounds like. Um, but he was just a guy, and this one, this lady is a congresswoman running in the second district of Virginia as a Democrat. I don't think I'm making that up. And um, <laughs> she said the same thing, and then went up to her saw and cut it in half, <laughs> like at the barrel. <laughs> and she was like... The, the easy part to cut in half. Yeah, and she like sat there with it. <laughs> <laughs> she also had no OSHA protection. No, she didn't have any OSHA No gloves, pro- nothing. No. Oh, really? A Democrat? That's I didn't even notice that, I yeah. guess. Z- z- zero. Yeah. Zero regulatory yep. protections on her. Wow. Yeah, she, bro- she, she broke so many laws that day. But the most important is making a short barrel rifle, which is highly illegal. Yeah, massively illegal. No, no um, legal, you know, sane gun owner does that. I know a lot of them probably do and just not tell anybody um, because it's fucking illegal. So don't do that. I'm not telling you to do that unless Please you don't do that and say that we unless told you, you really to. want to just don't get caught. In my, OK, in my opinion, I think uh, this, this is just Muhammad's opinion here. Do it. And because fuck the government. But that's all on you if you ever get caught. But it's illegal. She did it on video and. The funny thing is, people start. People sent uh, the FBI. No, not the FBI. The I think it was the the ATF. 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 Yeah, I know it was the ATF. I didn't know if it went to the FBI first, but yeah, the <laughs> they sent the ATF uh, 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 alerts on her, and now she's under investigation for creating a short barrel rifle, which in which is a rifle under sixteen inches barrel or a total of twenty six length the uh, the whole rifle 26 barrel right. 16 um which is illegal and it's, it's even a lot ho- easier to conceal does she not see it? you cannot conceal an ar you can conceal that <laughs> um so she got in trouble for it which to me was hilarious because you you know you people really want who are you calling you people <laughs> the gun control advocates on oh. either side <laughs> Doesn't matter what your party so, is. So, like, like our governor. Yeah, like, yeah. Like our wonderful governor. Exactly. 
who that dude just signed like he is not going to get elected for Senate. Yeah, because he's running for it, right? He's going to run for Senate. Yeah, he's not going to get that. And he's not going to get it now. Yeah. But before we finish that, but you want more gun control laws, but you don't know what laws are already on the book, and you're actually actively breaking them. Yeah. I mean, even, I don't remember what state it was. It must have been New York. It might have been a state representative. Had a high-capacity magazine. Or no, this might have been on national television. Somebody brought like a high-capacity magazine, which was illegal. Like, very illegal. It's like you don't you broke a law right there. Like we we're following the laws that you're trying to force on us, and all of you people of all different kinds are change wanting to add more laws. Like it's so fucking silly. Um. Anyways, Rick Scott, fucking <laughs> breaking our hearts. Yeah, hundred percent. Couldn't believe he signed that. Uh, well, actually, I can't believe he signed it because I always thought that he was. I mean, I used to think he I, was I, an okay Republican. I mean, I, thought I didn't, was, I didn't like him at all, but I, I thought he was an okay Republican. I thought he was good on certain things, certain yeah. issues, like the Second Amendment. Which, like, I, when he signed that bill, I was like, I knew he was going to sign it. I one hundred percent knew he was going to sign it, and I went, "Man, you're you are so dumb." Like, mm-hmm. I agree with a lot of the bill. I agree with some. Well, not a lot. Of the, I agree with some of the bill. Yeah. Um, but making it illegal for you to buy a weapon, but before you're 21 Mm -hmm. is idiotic. Yeah. Is idiotic. Yeah. Yeah. Like that makes zero sense to me. Like these, the way you're making, the way I see it is either you are, you're a fully grown competent adult Mm -hmm. or you're not. Yes. So if you can vote and join the military and smoke cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing in Florida, you know, like Florida is probably the second or third highest state of enlistees in the military, I think, from well, what I remember. Yeah, that's because they're all trying to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, all these people, especially if you join, like, the National Guard or the Reserves, which we have some of the biggest National Guard yep. and Reserve units, you can ha- – you're, you're, you're competent enough and trained to – Use an M4 or an M16, but not competent enough to own an AR-15. It makes no sense. No sense. You're creating, uh, you're creating a criminal group out of out of ageism, I guess. Like, based off of an age group, you're a criminal because you can't be trusted to. It, I, I hate it. It makes yeah, no sense. It do, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. What do you think, John? You know what I think funny about this whole gun control thing? Uh-huh. Is people don't know what an AR is. <laughs> they think it's an assault rifle. They don't even know the definition of an assault rifle. Well, there's also different definitions for it, and some people say it's a politically expedient, made-up word to uh, make people fear just rifles in general. No, there is assault rifles, but usually you have a selective switch yeah that lets you go more than fully semi-auto yeah well, i love that word yeah fully semi-automatic full, full semi-automatic yeah um that was cnn right or yeah so, something like that CNN or <laughs> i remember the cnn video where somebody was like watch what this ar-15 does this watermelon and the guy like Shh, it's a shotgun mm-hmm. <laughs> like what the fuck <laughs> um well i don't like the term Assault rifle, because to me, the up opposite of that then is defense rifle and like, OK. What, yeah. What, what constitutes a defense rifle versus an assault? Rifle? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I actually. God damn face. <laughs> really, <laughs> Zuck? Really, guy? I have this guns. This is what you're doing. Anyways, let's continue on. I have guns all over my house. Uh huh. I have one I carry on me all the time, except for when I'm working because I work for the city. But. First gun I would choose if somebody was coming to my house would be my AR. Well, of course. Because well, it holds what I mean, the most rounds. That or a shotgun or something. It doesn't matter what you're using. Like you, you're you going to use yeah. whatever the fuck you have. Yeah, but if, if I'm going to choose, I'm going to go for my AR. Yeah. It's the easiest to go around corners with. Yep. And it's very, it's I a, don't have to worry about running out of ammo in three shots. Very stable uh, platform to, to shoot yeah. with. Um, and... What I don't, you know, what I don't get is, uh, what do these people think that the criminals will not buy the guns on the black market somehow? Like they fucking will, and yeah, we're back. 
and, and think and think about it. Um, uh, this law is going to hurt people in that age group, especially women. Especially women. You know, but I mean, it's, well, I personally I would even say it's going to hurt uh, women and minorities. Yeah. More than yeah, yeah. People that look like me. Yeah. Um. But. This is going to hurt people. Now now a young woman at the age of 18, 19, and 20 cannot own a weapon to defend herself from anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't just have right. to be like just she, rapists. But r- rapists is a pretty fucking yeah, big one. Rapists, murderers, robbers, whatever. All of it. Right. Now these so women like, cannot they, defend themselves. And if they want to like move out, you're, like, and I understand like a lot of people move out and they don't have weapons in their house. Like I get that. But if somebody's like, oh, I need a weapon for protection in my house, they can't get one until they're 21. So what's the point of even moving out until after 21 at this point? Mm-hmm. And I moved out as quickly as I could. Like I moved out, I think I was like 18 and six months and I was gone. Mm-hmm. I, I, was re- I, was, I was ready to go. And so like I wanted to be on my own. And that's, I think, should be the goal for most. There's a lot of people that, you know, people again, back. There's a lot of young women. We have a lot of colleges here. We're one of the biggest states population wise. There's a lot of young women in that age group that without these weapons as a deterrent would. It would be harder for them to defend themselves from now on because it, they're now basically considered to be criminals because if they could have a gun in their hands, the government deems them, um, what's the word I'm looking for, unfit to own a weapon. Yep. And that's going to hurt people. And I think that's the most important thing to talk about when it comes to that. Also, the thing is the mental illness. Mm -hmm. We live in a society where if I say you're a man, but you're a woman, but I can't tell, you're offended, but it's okay for me to tell you you're mentally insane and shouldn't have a gun, but that's okay. Would you mind rephrasing it's, it's that? Like I think judging. I understand what you're saying. It's, I'm judging somebody by the way they are. Yeah. So if people get offended over everything. Uh-huh. But yeah. now you're telling me I can judge you and say you're mentally insane, uh, but I see that's what you're okay. Saying. I right. see what you're saying. I can, I can tell you you're crazy. Yeah. Just by looking at you. Yeah. But... If I were to misgender you, you could be offended and like yeah. I, I'm not allowed to do that, but I can say you're mentally okay. Yeah, insane. no, no, yeah, I, I yeah, I agree with you on that. It's silly, but by me saying that, you can be Baker acted and lose your guns. Yep, yep, that's true. Which is something. as Muhammad knows. As I, <laughs> yeah, which you know, that, Mark Bilt knows too. That's one of the things that that pisses me off about like the inefficiency. Can't you just Mark out like. Yeah. That. <laughs> The inefficiency and the bullshit of government. Like, I actually was never told that. That's why I asked you before the show. And we think that I'm not able to own any, as far as we know, to be safe. Uh, since I've been Baker acted and I have to prove somehow to a court of law that I am mentally fit. Um, right. How do you prove that? I don't know. Uh, but my issue is I was never told that I can't. Right. No, I get that too. But I mean, how do you prove it? And who's, who is the deciding factor on who's mentally fit? Exactly. And who is not. Yeah. But what it, if they never told people, the, okay, because this happened to me two weeks ago when I renewed my, my license. Um, you remember uh, last year when <laughs> my front right light was out and I was pulled over once and, uh, And then I didn't have my insurance paperwork on me, but I did have insurance. At the time? Yeah. Yeah. And um, the cop uh, told me that uh, to just go to the DMV and show them my proof, and this will all go away. If I don't, I'll I'll have to – I'll get a ticket or something. I never got the ticket because I I didn't go to prove it. I fucking – I didn't. This was like early last year. I was like not doing well. Mentally. I mean, that could have been any of last year. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, so, whatchamacallit. Uh, so, I was never told. I was pulled over the second time for the same headlight. And um, they told me that my license was suspended. And I was like, I was never told. Nobody told me my license was suspended. Nothing like that. Um, so, I had to leave my car. They took my license, blah, 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 blah. Um, anyways, that all was figured out, right? There's this instance of them not telling me anything that was going on with me and my license. Um, 
to two weeks ago when I renewed my registration on my vehicle, they told me that back in February. Last month. No, no. The uh, last like last year's February. Uh, a con- I think some kind of insurance company that subcontracted with uh, or with USAA sent the DMV a letter telling them I no longer have insurance. So my license was suspended again when I went in this time. And nobody told me. This was the second time now my license is being suspended. And I was like, I had insurance. Anyways, I ended up, I ended up proving to them that, it was, that I know I had insurance. I proved to them I had insurance. So they wiped it all out. And I'm just like, why don't, didn't you people tell me that this was even an issue? Considering that this was before the the thing that happened with the with the uh, headlights like i was pulled over with it and you guys thought i had insurance but then i did what the fuck's going on here and that's what that's the biggest thing that i hate about the government is they'll they'll do something like your baker acted your license is suspended and they don't fucking tell you until you're right there with the fucking cop putting the cuffs on you which to me is bullshit like and that's not the cop's fault that's just how the government is I'd really hate that. The government's not good enough to fucking <laughs> control people's rights to, you know, weapons based on their mental health issues. So, right. I'll just stop right there with that. Well, yeah, my thing on that is everybody who's saying that we need to keep guns out of, you know, like we need to have better mental health checks. Okay, so for the Democrats who are saying that, the people who are in charge of that right now are people you say have mental health problems. And for the Republicans that say it, when a Democrat gets in, like, yeah, what, who is going to say who has mental health problems? Like, okay, let's, and I'm not saying this is, and let's not say that this this last possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But, you know, I'm not saying this is a thing, but, you know, let's say that Trump, uh, Trump is like, okay, well, we're going to do things with, I'm going to make a list of mental health issues. Like. If you support Bernie Sanders, you have a mental health issue. Yeah. So I mean, you, which you do. Right. <laughs> which I agree with that. One. I mean, yeah, but I don't think that means they shouldn't own weapons. So, <laughs> so you know, like we can't. I'm just kidding, guys. I swear. He's not. He says it often, but you know, he, we can't sit there and say. We can't sit there and say that, you know, we can just come up with a list of all the mental health problems because if Trump's like, oh, well, anybody that doesn't want to vote for me in 2020 obviously has a mental health problem. So yeah. none of those people can own weapons like stuff like that. Like who is going to be the person that's going to decide exactly. These yeah. And funny enough, when I and the government should not be the people deciding. that. Yeah. Yeah. When I went, I had, I had one of my appointments last week and I saw the DSM sitting right there. And I remember the the show. I was like, oh, I was just talking about that book. <laughs> uh, the, do you know what the DSM is? Nope. It's the it's. I thought you watched our show. <laughs> All right, like I said, I just turned it on for you guys to have ratings. Close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's 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 the book that psych that's used by psych uh, psychologists and psychiatrists to uh, to define a wide variety of. Mental health mental issues. health issues, a wide variety from stuff like so like homosexuality used to be in that book now it's not uh gender dysphoria is in there um there's a wide variety of things you know bipolar depressive disorders on all that, and that's the thing is you can lobby a bunch of psychologists to at the University of Harvard to study people that like guns and then make a new entry in there of people that like guns want to kill people. And now anybody that wants to buy a gun cannot buy a gun because it is now a mental health issue to want to buy a gun. Right. It's fucking crazy. crazy. Yeah, no. And that's how it legitimately could happen. And I'm just like, no, we should not let the government control any of that. I don't even think with, okay. And something one of my friends said was, well, Muhammad, you were, uh, responsible enough to get rid of your firearms when I was dealing with my right issues. Fine, I understand, but I, I still don't think that we should take guns away from other people with the same depressive disorders that I have if they're as responsible as I am or not. Because even then, just being depressive doesn't mean not every depressed person 
is suicidal, yeah, there's a chance of that. But even then, suicide, in my opinion, should not at all factor in firearm crimes and, and gun control. I don't think... I don't think mental health issues when it comes to suicide should be a part of the conversation on gun control because if somebody's going to kill themselves, they're going to kill, kill themselves somehow. Yeah. Um, but depression you, you and all that. You'd have to ban pills and ropes and know? cars and yeah, bridges yeah, yeah. And cliffs. But what you you why should a person with depression not have the right to defend themselves if they're not if if they if they feel they're responsible enough to do that or not like I did, I think that should be up to them and not the government to right. decide. I think personal when, responsibility comes a long way. In the yeah. Year. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, and a lot of times when it, people, some people like our friend, I, I don't think I'm calling him out on this because he's argued this many a times before. Like one of, one of my friends, our friends, Zach, commie chorus, you know, he, <laughs> one of Antifa. his, and I believe him on this. One of his biggest issues with firearms availability is it allows people to easily kill themselves. And okay, I get that, but I don't agree with him that suicide should be the way we, th that taking away guns is going to make suicides go away. Right. You know, like you have to go to the core. Why the hell are these people trying to kill themselves to begin with? Not the Most gun the is easy. Pills or I don't know. I, I don't know I, the statistics. I don't know. Is it mostly pills? I don't know. It might, I would, it might be. I don't know. I would, I would say probably. Yeah. I would say side probably. effects, homicide, suicide, yeah. diarrhea, everything else. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, the 21 and up thing is stupid. The, you can't make a database of mental health issues and be like, these are what are going to preclude you from buying a gun. Yeah. Because I mean, who make? yeah, again, who makes that list? And then the government isn't reliable enough to enforce anything like that. Yeah. No, so, I... you know, it could be, you know, there, there could be a mental illness that, you know, that people would say, Oh no, you can't take away that person's gun because of X, Y, or Z. You know, they're just because they're, you're taking it because they're transgender, not because of this, or you're taking yes. it because they're black, not because of this, yeah. you're taking it because they're a woman, not because of this. Yeah. But then, you know, like, you just can't do it. It's not going to work. Yeah. 100% not going to work. And if you're going to let the kids vote, smoke, and join the military, let them buy weapons as mm -hmm. well. Like, I agree. 100%. I agree. Also let them drink. You know, like, you're, you're a responsible adult or you're not a responsible adult. There's one or the other, mm -hmm. and there's no gray area. Yeah. And like, for the for the longest time on military bases, you could buy alcohol at the age of 18, and, which is pretty cool. And, I mean, saying we're going to let... 21 and up by weapons, you know, because of what happened here in Florida, because the 19 year old kid owned a uh, AR is really dumb because most of the shootings have made the news. One of them, other than this kid, one other was under 21 and he stole his mom's gun. Mm -hmm. And right. a lot of them are with pistols. Right. And the, like we said last time, the largest school shooting in our history is Virginia Tech. And that was done with handguns. That, that had two shooters in that one, no, right? No, it was just one. No, just one. Really? Yeah. yeah. It was just one. I thought the Asian... Okay. I know it was the Asian guy. It was, was the Asian guy, yeah. Yeah. He was from Centerville. Yeah. Yep. He went to Centerville High School. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. You, yeah, you can't... Like, you can't do it. You none, none of the policies that they're coming up with will work. Yeah. There's only one policy that will work, and it's to get rid of gun-free zones. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my biggest thing. Get rid of gun-free zones. My thing is get rid of gun-free zones and allow teachers that carry off campus to carry to on carry on campus. Yep. Now so, now you will never fucking know. If you're a shooter, now you're never going to fucking know which fucking teacher has, is carrying, you know? Right. Mr. fucking... Well, yeah, anyways, you get the concept. Right. That's what I like about this bill is letting up to 10 teachers it is oh, that is a good thing about that, that is bill. that is the good but thing the about age that, thing is not a good right. thing yeah, nope. nope or the mental health thing all do, right do we, you like kratom yeah do, what oh okay. i mean we are way over time it really doesn't matter we can keep going but uh five minutes all right so uh <laughs> did you ask john if he likes kratom yeah 
I mean, that's a random question. Yeah. I know. Not, I used to make him crowd him. You like <laughs> I do. I was like, John. John likes crowd him. I know. I, mean, I used to, he, he I used to really pour him as crowd him. You and Eric. I think you guys would come you in together. To bed? Right. You can ask random questions too. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to segue here, guys. I know. I know what you were trying to do. Are you going to make America great again? <laughs> Roll Tide. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, so Tennessee uh, has had a very long, sordid history with Kratom. Mm-hmm. That we've talked about. That we've talked about a bunch. Um, so, man, I can't believe I just risked that. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, so they've had a long, sordid history with Kratom. And it was banned. But the way that the law was uh, written was that all synthetic, all synthetic drugs like kratom are banned. And then this guy, uh, I think his name was Christopher Miller. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong on that. He got arrested last year. It sounds like a Christopher Miller thing. <laughs> he got arrested last year for having, it was either five kilos or five pounds of kratom. I can't remember which. Either way, it was a lot. And he was selling it to somebody that he met on Craigslist, which turned out to be an undercover cop. Mm-hmm. And so he got arrested. But he got out of it because kratom is not synthetic. So in January, the attorney general of Tennessee said, no, you, we will not punish you if you have Kratom. Mm-hmm. And then they wrote a new bill um, that I wrote an article about that's up on our website. Um, I think it's House Bill 1482, if I remember correctly. Uh, but in it, there was Section 11-1. And the bill was good. I'm not going to lie. The bill was good except for 11 da- sorry, 11-1. Um, 11-1 said that all kratom, synthetic or natural, will be banned in the state of Tennessee, uh, and it will be felonious to possess. Uh, last This past week, uh, Tennessee took Section 11-1 out of the House bill. And this week coming up, uh, the Senate is ex- hopefully uh, expected to do the same, which means that Tennessee will fully be legal to have kratom for the first time in, like, Five years. Hell yeah. Right? Yeah. Really looking forward to that. Really looking forward to that. That's a huge win for the Kratom industry and for people who have been fighting for it for years. Yeah. And um cava bars up there? Not yet. C um Colin. I always call him C P Colin Powell. <laughs> Colin uh, actually was featured in a Playboy magazine article about Kratom. Yep. He uh, was. titled The Drug That scares the i think it's like the drug that scares the government but it shouldn't something like that yeah um oh no i haven't read it yet yeah what's his last name hollister so yeah just look up colin hollister i think it's one l and playboy magazine and kratom and you can read that article yep um kratom's gonna help a lot of people so so uh okay john i'm uh i'm gonna give you just a couple of minutes to say whatever you want to uh you had questions Oh, we kind of worked them in. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, they weren't great questions. They were just normal questions. What was the question he wanted that was so... What didn't you like about Trump? Oh. Yeah. What didn't you like about Trump? He also wanted to know why when Trump says something good, you say something... You always talk about how much how good it is, but when Trump says something bad, you never say anything about it. I'm gonna read straight. I'm going to read straight up what he sent me. I want to actually ask him in a serious way that he isn't going to prepare for it. Why is it that no matter what you seem... So I don't know what the hell he's talking about here, but maybe you do. Why is it that no matter what you seem to follow, Trump, even when it conflicts with earlier statements you have made on your beliefs? So why are you? Why do you still go along with what Trump says, even if it conflicts with something you believe in? Maybe this has to do with the video games thing. I don't know where you were standing on that. Um, oh, I said if you're going to... Try taking guns away. Why not take them out of our video games and movies and everything else? But he's going by Facebook. Okay. My Facebook is yeah, purely for trolling. Right. Your Facebook is strictly it's for making people upset. He falls into the trap every time. Right. Well, you've been got. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that was the only question. So I just asked you what you didn't like about it just to see what you would say. Yeah, I pretty much just post stuff to offend people. So, right. If you want to follow me and get offended, go ahead, yeah. John Sterner. All yeah. right, rate rate Trump. Rate Trump. Yeah, I think if he keeps going the way he's going, he's going to be one of the best. Okay, he'll be elected again. 
from A to F, what would you give him? I'll give him a B minus. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right now. All right. right. Cool. That's that's Five actually six. a very fair. That is a very fair rating. Yeah. I, I want to see when this Russia thing is going to stop because right now they haven't found jack shit on it. Yeah, I know. And it's getting annoying that people are keep going back to it. <laughs> so it just needs to stop. Yeah. Yep. And Trump's big f you to everybody for this whole Russia thing going on and on and on. It's going. All right, I'm going to run again. <laughs> you also need to stop bringing Hillary back in it. Either mm-hmm. reopen the investigation or don't. Or don't. Yeah. That I agree. I can with. understand that. Yeah. Anyway, All right. So, John, a couple of minutes. You can say whatever you want. And uh, I think I just did. Okay. Cool. All right. Man, I thought you were going to get a lot more offensive. So, <laughs> you know, you just got to grab him by the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are welcome for that. Oh, God. I like you, John. Yeah. That was that Women's International Day. <laughs> I will say, a lot okay. of sandwiches got made. And I will say, <laughs> I got I got a message from somebody on a Women's International Day who is a very hippie liberal woman. Um, and she was like, this Women's International Day bullshit is pissing me off. And I was like, yeah, me too. And she was like, and she was like, yeah. And I was like, how are we, like, we talk about wanting to be all one and promote, you know, everything. And yet we have these days to celebrate one specific group of people. Uh, I will say this. Well, I'm going to disagree with this already because you're thinking about it too much. It's either. Okay. So there's isn't also March for Women's History Month or something. I don't know. I thought they got a whole month, too. Um I don't see anything wrong with it if it's not divisive because I think I, okay. it's important see, that's the thing, to, is to help women. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. I get that. But at the same time, I see it as any time that we have these days for, you know, International Women's Month or Day or, you know, whatever, Transgender Day or uh, whatever. Like, yes. We are, we are now putting these people into a separate box other than. We are all people Mm -hmm. and oh, we need to be, we need to celebrate these people for their accomplishments, which then pisses off other people saying, why aren't we being celebrated for our accomplishments? Yeah. And that is where the issue really comes up in my mind, because all of these days only help push divisiveness because now everybody wants a day for themselves, you know, and people are, oh, the joke always is where's international white guy month. Or yeah. a day, right? I don't want that. Oh, I don't of, want all of history was that. That's right. what they would say. Yeah, exactly. And like that was actually funny. That was a good voice. <laughs> you should just have a Trump day and it'd be everybody. Right. So, you know, like why have individual days for all these different groups? Mm-hmm. Instead, let's just have no days for any like no days for any groups. Like it's just we celebrate everybody every day. Like that's the way I see it. Well, Make it unofficial. I mean, like, I can see that. But, I mean, you can only go as far as not make it official. But if, you know, but if groups of people want to organize that thing, then they they can organize it. Right. Like, we, we agree it, on that. Right. Like, yeah, they can organize it. That's fine. But yeah. it's like with everybody going, oh, it's International Women's Day. And people got pissed off that Disney announced that Jon Favreau is going to be writing and directing a new Star Wars series. Which is super excited about that, by the way. Who is that? Uh, he directed Iron Man. Okay. And the Jungle Book and okay. all those. Is he a good director? I mean, I liked Iron Man, but I don't know what else. Iron Man, Iron Man 2, uh, the Jungle Book. Yeah, he's a good director. Okay. I'll quickly, he's a good So director. that's different, right? He's not a sci-fi guy. Uh, he's done some sci-fi stuff. Okay. He's been in a couple. Of, he's actually voiced some Star Wars characters. Oh. So, I mean, he's he's a sci-fi guy. But yeah, so he's uh, really excited about, like, they announced it and people were like, this is so insensitive for them to be announcing this on International Women's Day. I don't care. Jon Favreau is directing and writing (laughs) some Star Wars shit. That's all I care about in that entire thing. Yeah. Like, I don't care what day they announce that. Mm -hmm. Like, don't be so sensitive. Yeah. Which you were saying earlier. Grabbing by the pussy? No. (laughs) I'm just trying to offend people. Now. <laughs> <laughs> About people need to stop being so sensitive. <laughs> All right, let's close it out. Uh, oh, you have Ross watching. How's his sorry ass cobble bar? Oh, oh my god, <laughs> love you, Ross. Um, <laughs> I love Ross. Who doesn't? 
Uh, um, <laughs> is Ross really watching? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, said you're ugly. <laughs> anyway, uh, John, thank you for coming on. We do appreciate it. Do you have anything to plug? I don't know. Do, do you want to talk about anything? I want a day with me and Zach in here. We may be able to arrange that. Me and Mo can take the day off. He might get shut down quick. Oh, yeah. But... I mean, somebody's getting a shot. But... <laughs> Good thing he don't believe in guns, huh? <laughs> he, see, he says he does. He's, he claims that he does in all of his Facebook arguments. Anyway, John, we do appreciate you coming on. Um, if my yard still needed to be cleaned up, I'd be like, go clean my yard. But I did it. So did job. <laughs> Hopefully we can put the float back. I mean, you know. No. <laughs> he doesn't like that. Don't do it. For see, but yeah, now I'm, now I'm in a posi- now I'm in a position of negotiation. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> now it's different. Oh, true that. <laughs> yep. So um, now I have position of negotiation. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I do appreciate it, Mo. Do you have anything? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. Well, we went super over time today. I think that's our longest show we've ever done. That's yeah, insane. but it was really fun. It was fun. It was a good time. Yeah. Um, again, everybody, if you aren't following us on Facebook, facebook.com backslash muddied waters of freedom, you can follow us on Instagram at muddied waters of freedom or on Twitter at muddied underscore waters. You can add John Sterner. I tagged him in a bunch of stuff. So add him, blow him up and tell him whatever you want. Give him congrats. Tell him he's ugly. Tell him he looks like he's Amish. I don't care. Tell him whatever you want. Um, I have a sexy cover photo if anybody's wondering. He, he, he. A lot of our friends would like his cover photo. Um, they would make fun of it, but they would like it. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, remember, if like, please share. We will be back next week at our usual muddy time on our usual muddy day. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, uh, do you have the music queued up? Yeah. Okay, wow. Look at us. All right, guys. Uh, remember... Uh, thank you for joining us. And remember where we're going. You have to hit play first. We don't need roads. <laughs> See, now there's dead air because you didn't hit play first. <laughs>